planning officer has decided that he's going to decline the new application. Hello. Hello. What's happened? You, you answer quick, you know. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> you called me. Um, guess what? Oh, no, don't tell me. We got approval. We, we've got planning permission. For those of you who don't know, obviously I'm doing a barn conversion. Well, it was a barn conversion and now it's a new build. I'm calling it the barn rebuild and basically I didn't get planning permission for what I'd done. I did and I didn't. If you're interested in finding out exactly what's happened and why this situation occurred, obviously you can stay tuned. It's gonna be a bit long-winded and uh, I don't know whether it's a bit boring, but it might be useful for someone out there to obviously, so you don't end up in my situation. So, what happened? What the bloody hell happened? So we built, we bought it, uh, the barn with uh, class Q granted. So that's like permitted development. What are all these people doing on country lanes? So, we bought it with Class Q. Now, we wasn't really happy with um, the way it was carved up and everything, so what we wanted to do is apply for full planning permission so we could get an extension on the side and also we wanted a cart lodge, like an outside office and all this kind of stuff. So we went through for full planning permission. Now, what we done is I'll show you on the screen now if I can record something. We done a part rebuild, part conversion and part extension on the barn. And um, everything was fine, it went through, got approved and all of that kind of stuff. Now, what I didn't realise and now I know is that basically what happens is if you buy something like a barn in the middle of the countryside you've got permitted development rights when well yeah you can apply for under permitted development to turn it into residential property now the council have got limited powers when it comes to that in terms of like being difficult and saying oh no you can't have it and all this kind of stuff but it still happens I've linked a, a few articles below if you would like to obviously find out a bit, a bit more about all this kind of stuff. There's issues with um, some people say, uh, some councillors go, oh no, you, you can't do it because it's not structurally safe and all that kind of stuff, or like maybe it hasn't got enough still standing and, and all that kind of stuff. So if you, if you get that, what you can then do is apply for full planning permission. The only reason, allegedly, why I got mine granted the first time round is because I had a fallback of the class Q. So that means that basically they'll go, well, if we don't, if we refuse this, you're going to build that anyway, and we can't stop you from building that. So we'll we'll just grant this. Go, yeah okay no problem now obviously what had happened with mine was we didn't um, that a lot of the barn wasn't really structurally sound and all that kind of stuff and then when it comes to putting in the foundations it was just impossible and it's like it buckled the frame that had stayed up and everything so I was like right okay take it down we'll just put it put it up afterwards so we, we'll do it we'll build it exactly the same but we'll just build it in a different order kind of thing that meant that i then needed to reapply for planning permission on the basis that building control then wanted to count it as a new build now that causes issues with a vat reclaim so here's something that a lot of people don't necessarily know and even like articles on on the internet 
they get it wrong, like allegedly professionals and everything. There's two different ways that you can do it. Basically, you, you are allowed to reclaim the VAT. So on a barn conversion, reclaim VAT. What you can do is on supplier and fit, like main contractors and everything like that, you can get a reduced rate of 5%. So they charge you 5%. And then anything else you buy, like this part of the building, like this fixed, if you know what I mean, um, you pay full 20% VAT on it. And then at the end, once you've finished and you signed off and all that kind of stuff and building control, you send off all of your invoices and everything like that to, um, to the HMRC and then they, re, they repay you everything. So the full 20% that you've paid on materials and 5% that you've been charged by builders and stuff like that. Now, if you do a new build, then it's zero rated instead. So builders and plumbers and electricians and all this kind of stuff, they um, charge you 0% VAT, providing they are VAT registered, obviously. Um, if they're not, what I was doing previously when I got anyone that wasn't pre VAT registered, I'd buy the material so I could reclaim that 20% at the end. All very complex. So you get 0% rated. So obviously my main contractor, he's not gonna charge me any VAT whatsoever. He gets charged VAT on the materials, but he claims that back anyway. So that will all be 0%. And then anything that I now buy, that's at like 20% or anything, um, I reclaim at the end. So it basically net net at the end, once you've either done a conversion or a new build, you get 0%. 0% VAT. For some unknown reason, they just, what's the point in doing a reduced rate at 5% on a conversion? If it's gonna end up zero anyway, why can't they just do it the same as a new build? Like, it make, logically, it makes no sense whatsoever. Anyway, so that's the situation. So what happened to me was building control then said, well, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna class it as a new build. So that meant my sign-off certificate was gonna say a new build, and then my planning permission was gonna say conversion. Now, what, what VAT do I then get charged? Like, do I do it at the reduced rate, or do I do it at, at the other rate? And the thing is, if you get anything wrong, then the HMRC go, mm, no, we're not gonna give you your VAT back because you've done something wrong. So you only get one chance. So I was like, right, okay, what am I gonna do to sort this out? I'll reapply for planning permission, thinking that it was gonna be okay. Now, it wasn't okay. And I thought, right, okay, it's one removed from my class queue. I've already got planning permission for what I wanna build. And now I'm just, I'm doing it again, but it's just basically, I needed to change the title so it said, Instead of uh, conversion, it was like demolishment of existing barn, new build on it on existing footprint. So it's just exactly the same. And everything in principle was agreed last time, and so I thought it was gonna be okay. But here's the sticking point. What then happens is because I started on my original planning permission and as a result of obviously what happened because it was dangerous i had to take it down this new planning permission i didn't have the fallback of the class queue anymore because i'd already taken everything down now that that essentially made my last planning permission null and void because i wasn't doing a conversion anymore because that had a fallback of the class queue. Now this new planning permission, it doesn't have the fallback of the class queue and it doesn't have the fallback of my previous plan permission. So as far as they're concerned, it's a brand new development in the middle of the countryside, which you're not allowed to do. So all this housing shortage stuff and everything like that, 
one of the things that contributes towards it is because the councils don't let you build anything because of the national planning policy and it's just like come on like be realistic like not everyone's going to be able to build stuff in the centre of the town like there's there's not enough land basically so why can't they release individual plots every now and then I'm going to have to put my light on because you can't see me why like why don't they let people build in, in the countryside like if it's an individual plot one of the reasons why allegedly is because there's no infrastructure around you you can like oh it's not good to like have to drive into town to get your shopping or whatever like you sh they like you to be able to walk down to the shops and get your shopping or be outside a bus stop like in it's ridiculous like yeah, I, d I just don't understand it anyway so this situation happened I've put in my plan permission I thought it was all right, we carried on, all this kind of stuff, and I thought it won't be a problem, it's just a paper exercise. It's not a bloody paper exercise, obviously. So the planning officer, he turned up and um, to do a, a, to put up the site notice, seeing what had happened, he was really difficult, he was really standoffish. I, I tried to have a ch chat with him. I got off the cart lodge roof that I was doing at the time and I said, oh, like, oh how are you doing, blah, blah, he put up the sign, I was just tried to be friendly, but he, he wasn't friendly at all, he wasn't interested. Next thing, he's phoned up my architect saying, right, this is the situation and um, I'm going to refuse the planning permission because on this basis you can't build stuff in the countryside and this is a brand new application, the last application's been nothing basically so that meant that what what he'd effectively I'd like I'd, I'd tried to speak to him like myself and everything he what had happened he, he found me architect said said that and he said right I'm going on holiday for a week and um, if you if your client wants to speak to me you can speak to me when I get back it was just like, oh, right, well, well, thanks for that. And then I recorded, obviously, what happens, and then I've, I've cut a lot of that out. Now you're getting the full spill, basically. Anyway, so I tried to speak to him, and I said, like, right, this is a situation, like, I'm going to lose, like, hundreds of thousands of pounds. What, like, is there not any way that you can deal with this? Like, is, is like, come to some kind of arrangement? And he was just like, no, 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 not, not, not really. So I said, look, does it, like, is the land not already residential now because it was granted under my previous planning application? Like, does that not count for anything? And he was just like, no, it doesn't count for anything. And because you, because you took down the original structure, basically that land isn't residential. It never was. It, was. it would only have been residential as soon as you finished your original planning permission. So now it just re reverts to agricultural land. So you're talking about two, two acres, maybe eight grand an acre. So like 16 grand. So hundreds of thousand pounds lost. Just, just in the blink of an eye, because of planning policies and also because this bloke, he just wanted, he, he was one of them, do you know what I mean? Not, not, not happy with the world. <laughs> so we like it, he he then said right okay um what was it he said right what happened why why did you start what what happened to the original plans and all this kind of stuff and i said like this is the situation this this is exactly what happened uh, we started, blah, 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 the frame was unsafe, we had to take it down, I didn't realise it was an issue, blah, 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 and I had to write this, uh, give him basically the story of what happened, and he said, right, okay, I understand, blah, 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 he said, right, you need to send me that in uh, writing with photographs about what happened and when, um, and he gave it all this rubbish about... Um, the photographs they they have metadata to say when they was taken basically because he didn't 
he didn't necessarily believe what had happened. It was it was almost like he initially thought that I just bowled in there, knocked it all down, started building a new, new house kind of thing. And I didn't do that. I, obviously, I did knock down some of it and everything, but I didn't like go in there with a bulldozer. Like I took it down carefully, especially the frame. The frame come down, it was all ordered, it was all kept neatly, and it, it, it was all numbered and everything. And I showed him the diagram where I'd labelled it up and everything like that. Anyway, so he went off on his holiday and he said, right, send me that email and uh, I'll let you know, obviously, when, when I come back. Now, obviously, my architect was trying to sort things out as well he he couldn't really do anything like he didn't know what to do um, so he said I, I can speak to a planning consultant and I said right do that anyway so he, he had an initial chat with a planning consultant the planning consultant said to me, said he can speak to me if he wants he might want to wait it's up to him so I said right I'd rather speak to him now so I spoke to this bloke turns out he was um, the enforcement officer for the council well, he, he was the head of the department for the enforcement team for the council that obviously I I I live well I don't live for, for the council that obviously is giving this planning permission. Now, um, he said, right, you haven't really got a leg sta to stand on as such, but they can grant these things. They've done it in the past and they can do it again and so he basically said right I'm happy to help you out but you can see what happens he said probably the best thing that you can do is speak to your local councillor and I was like right okay he said so what what you need to do is you phone phone up your councillor and um, basically say that you've gotten gotten in, you've gotten yourself into this situation you didn't mean to and all this kind of stuff and basically can he help you and I was like right okay I said well what do you mean like and he's I said like is he, is he gonna help and he said no like that's what they're there for like the, these people it, basically what what it is your local councillor they're like your local MP and whereas your MP is almost like more regional, your council is obviously local government, and they're there to bridge the gap between the constituents and obviously the higher powers, if you like. So I was like, all right, and he said, so ask him if he can help, basically. And he said, and then let me know what happens. I was like, all right. So anyway, I checked on the internet about local councillors and what they do and all that kind of stuff. The council, um, the planning consultant said to me, he said, look, he said, it shouldn't be done and all this kind of stuff, but he said, what you've got to bear in mind is elections are coming up soon. So councillors, they like to get people on side. So that might help. And I was like, right, okay. So after I got the phone to him, he gave me the local councillor's no, number as well. He looked it up for me. He already, he already knew him anyway. But, but yeah, I phoned him and I said, my name's Aidan, I've bought a property in, um, in your constituency and uh, I've basically come unstuck with a planning application. Have you got a minute to have a chat? And he said, yeah, that's fine. Well, what's happened? So I, I told him exactly what happened. And he was like, right, I understand. He said, like, these things happen. Like, when you go to obviously convert old barns, they always fall down and everything. And he said, like, so I, I can understand. What was your planning application number? I gave that to him. He said, right. He said, I've actually got a meeting with the chief planning officer tomorrow. He said, so. I'll have a chat with him, he said, and then when your planning officer comes back off holiday, I'll ring him and I'll have a chat with him as well. And I was like, all right, yeah, okay, thanks, thanks. But I didn't know what he was actually going to do, whether he was going to influence it or not, or anything like that. So, many weeks passed. Now, Lou 
I'd, I'd recorded that what had happened previously, where I was sitting there with a with, like in the red jumper, and I was going to release that video. I had planned out obviously like a, a premiere for the new new rebuild of the barn and all this, and I had to cancel that because it all just went the shit in the fan. Everything was like. You just can't imagine how everything just collapsed. Lou didn't want to let t- tell people that basically this is the situation that we was in and we was going to lose all this money. So I recorded that and then obviously now everything's fine. So now I'm telling you obviously what's happened. In the meantime, obviously, I, I, I have got loads of vlogs recorded. Um, it was just so stressful. I just took everything down from my YouTube, and I was just like, "Right, okay, I'm, I can't do anything now. I can't, I can't carry on. Like nothing's happened." And she was wasn't comfortable with me telling anyone or anything like that. So I, I just stopped. So that's the reason why I just went missing in action. I have I have been recording stuff. I I stopped what I was doing like the, the cart lodge but I told the main contractors to carry on because otherwise I wouldn't have gotten back basically the bricklayers would have been on to other jobs and everything and then that, that would have been like almost game over so I, it was almost like it was too far in so we just carried on and so we ended up obviously in that position and everything now what's now happened is um I, I had a call from the architect and uh, he said like you, it's been granted it's all good all of that so I was like right brilliant um, I'll, let, I'll let Lou know and all that kind of stuff and uh, I, he emailed me the the decision and it had come from the chief planning officer and he copied in the councillor as well so I assume that the councillor had some kind of influence over it. The planning officer, he he had eventually come on side anyway. He was on side after I had explained what had happened and he got my statement and everything. I don't know why. He, it was almost like he decided that he was just going to be an arsehole. And then after I went, look, you're going to destroy it my life like can you not like it, 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 logically it made no sense I was building exactly the same as what we'd already got planning permission for anyway so that that's the situation so we're now we're here today I'm recording this and now I'm gonna punch it out I've been talking for 25 minutes oh my god I'm gonna have to edit this down so if you're ever in my position what you do is you get your class queue and then if there's something that's not quite right with it like it's a dodgy brick barn and all this kind of stuff if you was lucky enough to get class queue without them checking for a structural survey or anything like that which is what happened and they just granted it because they assumed that on like the basis of whatever happens that you could do it then go for planning permission, full planning permission afterwards, right? You've got your class Q as a fallback. Basically, if I would have redone it now, I would have went full rebuild. Knock it all down and rebuild it, yeah? Now what you need to do is, you, if you respect what was there originally, and you basically use it, the, the excuse for actually doing it is to make it more economically viable no the, ex- the excuse for knocking it down and restarting is to make it more eco-friendly if you like and more energy efficient um, respect what was there so you basically do a, a, a new build in the style of a barn if you understand and they'll be all right with it. They'll grant it on the basis that you've got class Q fallback anyway. 
Now what you can't do is you buy a, a barn and then you uh, apply to knock it down and and build like a Georgian mansion there, saying it's completely bloody different. They won't like that then. I don't know whether you would get planning permission or not, but it's probably not the best idea. So if you were to just do a standard, don't, I would say you can't add extra floors and all that, or make it taller or anything like that. They'll let you it, they'll, they'll, they'll be okay with you extending it slightly to get utility rooms or um, boiler rooms and stuff like that. that they kind of understand that. That's the reason why I had obviously applied for an extension on that basis. If you then want to increase the size of it, increase the footprint more, get your full planning permission and then do a minor amendment afterwards and you can increase it up to 25% without going for a full new brand new application. And I think you can do that a few times. So each, like you could probably do two or three minor amendments, increase it by 25% each bloody time and end up with a bloody mansion in the end. That's probably the best way to do it. I didn't realize that I could have done that in the first place. And it's like just went straight from class Q to a full new build. That's what I should have done. I was trying to obviously respect what was there, but I could have done that anyway, because that's what I've ended up doing. I've rebuilt, basically I've done a polished version of what was there originally. And if you like stuff inside and you want to keep it, then you can always put it back in afterwards, like I've done with the steel frame and everything like that. I assume it, it might be a little bit different, obviously if you've got a, uh, a listed barn or anything like that or a wooden barn but there's no reason obviously you get class key you go full full rebuild the other way that you can do it is you do what i done but then you don't plan apply for planning permission again and you just rebuild it they would have never have known everyone that i spoke to said you shouldn't have told them you should have just rebuilt it they would have never have known because it was exactly the same as before and i was just like well I had to do it for the VAT basically but you try and do the right thing and you try and obviously put put things into place you just come unstuck sometimes if you need to know anything or you've got any questions then obviously hit, hit them down below um, I'll try and answer obviously I've learned a bloody lot about what's happened planning policies and all this kind of stuff there's uh, there's obviously like a few articles down below that might be helpful for anyone and all that kind of stuff I've waffled and waffled for half hour now so I'll try and get it down try and make it a bit more interesting but that's it I'll leave you there if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and I will see you later. I'm going to re-release all of my channel, and we'll get ready for the premiere next week. Please join in. I'll be there to chat with you as well. We're going to have a drink, have a celebrate. I'm going to release it on Friday. Thanks for watching. See you later.